So on Friday, we started with equivalent fractions. So I thought we would start off right away reviewing what we did as we left Friday afternoon and we did an exit ticket. The exit ticket asked you to explain what an equivalent fraction is and to give an example. Now that's where it got a little tricky. Some of us did not give an example. If I returned your exit ticket to you, that means you need to add to it, okay? That means you did not get a three. You did, you made a mistake. So I want you to learn from your mistakes. We're going to add a text box here and explain what an equivalent fraction is. So if you don't have one, you got a three, what did you say an equivalent fraction was? Serene, what did you say an equivalent fraction is? What do you think an equivalent fraction is, Serene? A fraction that what? Two fractions that are the... Okay, so you should be writing this if you got a two. That's why you have a colored pencil. An equivalent fraction is a fraction that is the same is what Cerne said, or equal to another fraction. For example, what were some examples you guys said? Sunny. Um, that you can add Don't draw. Them. One half is equal to. Two fourths. That would have been a great example. That's all you had to write. Honestly, if you gave me an example and you said the word same or equal, you met my expectations for the day's lesson. I didn't get, um, I didn't get my exit. Why didn't you get yours? What did I say? If you didn't get one, you got a three so be celebrating if you did get yours i wasn't going to pass them all out if you did get yours you just need to learn from it because guess what we're going to work on again today equivalent fraction so some of you if you're remote i returned yours to you i think a couple of you said an equivalent fraction is a fraction that is equal or the same amount shows the same amount, but you might not have said that um, you might not have given an example. Okay. Show me if you need one more minute fixing that. Can you put the lid on that and give me whole body? Does anyone need another minute fixing? One more minute. If you have made your correction, would you please put it in the basket? and get ready for the rest of math. An equivalent fraction is a fraction the same or equal to another fraction. They show the same amount. Can anyone think of another example that maybe you wrote on your exit ticket? You need to keep writing. We're doing this for you. What else is equal to a half? What do you think, Lila Maris? Four eighths. Four eighths. What else, Lennox? Two fourths, three six. Lyric, did you have one? Okay, six twelfths, five tenths. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on. So I'm gonna continue reading some of fraction action because believe it or not, this is our last week of fractions. We'll finish up our fraction unit before we start spring break. Go ahead and put the lids on your markers and give me whole body listening. We're not gonna read the whole thing today, but we are gonna read a section. We left off at the lemonade for sale section. So back to our characters. Step right up for the best lemonade in town. You can see it cost a dollar, right? Tally, it's the middle of winter. 
So we can see that. So nobody's going to buy lemonade in this coal. Hmm, maybe I should lower the price a little. So he's thinking of quarters because four quarters equals a dollar, right? They're each 25 cents. I'll subtract one fourth, which is 25 cents. One dollar minus 25 cents is 75. 75 cents. So that's a fourth of a dollar, a quarter would be. Hey, Ginger, do you want a nice cold glass of lemonade? You must be nuts. Maybe it's still too expensive. I'll subtract half of a dollar, which is 50 cents. One dollar minus 50 cents equals 50 cents. Hello, Miss Prime. My lemonade is half price today. No, thank you, Tally. Hmm, I'll have to make it even cheaper. I'll subtract three fourths, which is 75 cents. $1 minus 75 cents leaves a price of 25 cents. Boy, now I'm getting thirsty. Oh no, the lemonade is frozen. Now what? Ice pops, lemon, I, lemon ice pops for sale. Come and get your fresh lemon ice pops. I'll take one, please. Yes. Tally subtracted three fourths from the original price. If he subtracted another fourth, how much, listen, no yelling. How much would he charge? Nice. Write it on your boards and hold it up. If he subtracted another fourth from his already discounted price, how much would he charge? Try again, Ben. Let's see, Astria, Reese, let's see your thinking. Try again. Okay, my kiddos here seem to have it. Okay, let's look at the answer. All right, if Tally subtracted one fourth from the original price, which was 25 cents, he would be charging zero. Think about it. If you have three quarters, right? Let's see. He had three quarters. He had 25 cents, 25 cents, 25 cents, 25 cents. He first took a fourth away. Then he took half, which is both of them, right? Then he took another fourth, which made three fourths. He said now he was down to the lemonade pops being 25 cents. If he took one more fourth away, there's none left, right, Ben? Zero cents. It would have been free. It would have been free. Okay. Well done. We'll finish that book tomorrow. So today our learning target is to find two or more equivalent fractions using number lines. And that's just so we can do that in real life. We're gonna use number lines and other things because I wanna review a little bit to find equivalent fractions. I see I have a chat, I'm not sure. Yes, should I check it real quick? Oh, free, Henry, good job, yes. Nicely done. All right, don't forget our vocabulary. A fraction's a number that names part of a whole or of a set. Unit fraction, show me on your fingers. 
What is the numerator on a unit fraction? Show me on your fingers, on your mark, get set, go. What number? Josh Lewis, what is it? One, one. unit fraction has a numerator of one. It shows one equal part of a whole. Numerators top, denominators, which number on a fraction? The bottom, the down number. It shows the total number of equal parts where the numerator is talking about the number of parts that are being counted or shaded. We added three new vocabulary words on Friday. Equivalent means, microphone answer, equal or naming the same amount. Equivalent fractions, name the same amount, like one half and two fourths are equivalent fractions. Some of you added this vocabulary to your uh, exit ticket and it was not quite right. An equivalence chain is a series of equivalent fractions that we connect with equal signs, but it is different than what is an equivalent fraction. Okay, wanted to clarify that. Uh, before, well, let's go ahead, let's watch this. I wasn't sure if I was ready, but we will. Remember, equivalent fractions look different, but it's the same thing. Two fourths and one half are equivalent fractions. Now, to help you understand equivalent fractions a little bit more, let's take a look at some number lines. This first number line, I had to divide it into three parts. You have one third, two thirds, and two sevenths. Now, I'm going to take a number line of the same length and divide it into six parts. So now we have one six, two six. Take a look at one third and two fourths. They measure the same point on the number line. They are equivalent fractions. They measure the same thing, but look at this. Two thirds and four sixths measure the same point. So they also are equivalent fractions. Let's take a look at another example. On this number line, I have it divided into four parts. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths. I next will take a number line of the same length and divide it into eight parts. Again, take a look at one fourth and two eighths. They measure the same point on the number line. They are equivalent fractions. Two fourths and four eighths measure the same point. Equivalent fractions. Abby, turn around. Don't write on that. And the same with three fourths. Now I'm going to divide the number line into 16 parts, and it's small. In fact, it's so small I could put the fractions on the bottom. In fact, it's getting messy, so let's count them off. We have 1 16, 2 16, 3 16, 4 16, 5 16, and 6 16. Do you notice how small they are? These are 16. They're tiny because you're dividing it into bigger number. They all measure the same point on the number line. All three of them are equivalent fractions. Now let's move over to four eighths, two fourths, and eight fourths. Again, measure the same. What are those called? When they line up, they're measuring the same distance from the zero to that point on a number line. So it's the same amount. Okay. Yeah, a lot of them do, don't they? All right, so now we are going to use our dry erase boards. We're gonna look at some fraction cards. We'll look at number lines and circles to find equivalent fractions. So get your dry erase boards. We're gonna practice a little bit. I'm going to put some cards on under the dock camera. We're gonna not just look at equivalent fractions, but we're gonna compare them as well. Okay, so let's look at our first two. I have four twelfths and four eighths. I want you to write those fractions and I want you to write which one is greater, if it's greater than, less than, or equal, because equal means equivalent. So even when we're looking for equivalent fractions, we're comparing them. 
And sometimes we find that they're what? Equal. All right, Lila. Is this greater than, is 4 twelfths greater than, less than, or equal to 4 eighths? Think about what you know about comparing fractions and look carefully. What do you see? Which one is, is this more than this or is this more than this? Which one? Astria, what do you think? I think it's four eighths. So you made the gator's mouth go like this? Okay, that's what I should see. Excellent. All right, now what happens if I put two fourths there? Is that still true? Now I want you to compare two fourths to four eighths. What symbol would you draw between those? Let me see on your board. Hold it up when you have it. Anybody notice a relationship between two and four and four and eight? Has anyone noticed? I think Sunny's noticed it. Max, I didn't want to teach it on Friday. So you're doubling it, right? Notice that two and four Four is double two, right? If I multiply, Lila, if I multiply two times two, I would get four. If I multiply four times two, I would get eight. You wanna hear a cool trick? Yeah. Anytime I do that, I would get an equivalent fraction. Look, I could multiply two times four and get eight and two times eight and get 16 and eight sixteenths is gonna be equal to four eighths. I knew Sunny got it because she kept naming them when I'm looking at what's equivalent to a half. She was able to say six twelfths, right? Because six is half of 12. Five tenths, because five is half of 10. If you multiply that numerator by two, you'll get the denominator, right? Kind of cool. You'll get to learn more about that as you get older in math. That's not really uh, part of my learning target, but I think you guys can see it and use it. So. Everybody give me a thumbs up if you change that sign to equal. These are E what? Lucas, what do we call these two fractions? They're called what? Equal or what's the fancy word? Equivalent. All right, let's try a couple more. Let's do two thirds. Nine tenths. Are they equivalent? Are they equal? Cooper, are they equal? Okay, hold up your board when you know the relationship. All right, Cooper, can you tell us which one's greater? Nine tenths. So two thirds is less than nine tenths. What if I didn't have the picture there? What could you do as a mathematician, Robert, to figure it out? Should you just guess? What could you do? Okay, well, could you draw a picture? Could you? What if you didn't know? Could you draw a picture? All right, let's try it. I'm going to give you a couple fractions to compare. I want you to draw a picture. You could do a rectangle or a circle. I want you to compare 
two thirds compared to three fourths. Which one is going to be greater? Draw it on your board. Come on, Finn, let's draw. If you're drawing circles, try to make them the same size. Mrs. Harris and I were remembering that when you do map testing or um, park testing, any of those CMAS, they don't give you a picture. You have to draw it yourself. So I was thinking about that and I was thinking, do you guys know how to divide a circle into thirds? There's a trick. It's a peace sign. Or what I like to do is make it a Y. I put a big capital Y in a circle and I know I have thirds. Or if you're really good at drawing peace signs, you could do that. Now remember with fourths, you divide it in half, divide it in half again. So now that you have your circles divided, how would I shade that for the first fraction? Everybody's drawing, right? This is not a choice. I want you to practice because we know you need the skill to be successful. What would I draw? What would I do next, Gabe? I see you've done it. What do I have to do next to show the fraction? What do we call this? Shade it. So I got to shade two of my thirds and how many of my fourths? Well, let's look at the numerator. Three, one, two, three. Now, which one is greater? Which one is greater? Microphone answer. Now we know it's three fours. Sometimes you're gonna forget the rules. They're not gonna be unit fractions or the denominator's not gonna be the same or the numerator's not gonna be the same. You're just gonna have to draw a picture. And honestly, sometimes drawing a picture is a good way just to check your, your work. Could I have done a fraction bar instead? Draw a fraction bar. Make sure they're the same size about and then divide it up into thirds and fourths. Shade two thirds, shade three fourths. Does that help you see it as well? Yep, I wanna see everybody's fraction bars. Astria, hold yours up. Let's see how they look. I've asked you to create fraction bars. Reese, I'd like to see yours. Ben, when you're done, I can see my, that's not the same. They need to be the same. You made like a square or something. Need to be two rectangles. Shade them in. Good job, Gabe. Thank you for sharing yours. Hold it up when you've got it. I just want to make sure Marin's got it. I want to see your fraction bars now. Try doing fraction bars. Thank you, Marin. Thank you. Cooper's got it. Let's see, Josh. Can you draw fraction bars? That's the what I asked, right? Do it right now. We're waiting. I know some of you think I don't, that's not right, honey. Look up here. You gotta divide it up. Not the way I asked you to. I asked you to divide it up equally. Thank you. Good job. Max did it. Paxton's following directions. Ellie's following directions. Thank you, Bird. I'd love to see Evie's, August, Max's, Abby's. Where's Abby? Okay. Good job, Max Deesberg. Okay, Finn, thank you. All right. I think you're getting that a little bit better. Here's another way we can visualize fractions and compare them. Let's try one sixth compared to one third. It's similar, look what I can do. I can line them up. Which would be greater, one sixth or one third? Hold it up on your board when you have it, Reese and Nastria and Ben. Or which would the greater gator eat? I can see my people here starting to compare them. Cerne, I'd love to see your thinking. 
Which one is greater? Look at the blue section. That would help you. Lennox, what do you think? Excellent. Now what I want to do, I'm going to put some fraction cards up here. And I want you to tell me if any of them are equivalent. And how do you know? If you can identify any equivalent fractions out of these four cards, would you write your equivalence chain on your board and hold it up? Are any of these fractions equivalent? And if yes, how do you know? Evie, do you think there are any that are equivalent? I'm not gonna agree with that. I would say there are two. Which two do you think are equivalent or the same? What do you think, Haley Booker? Let's check it out. Are they equal? Yes. If you said two fourths like Astria did and Reese, you were right. One half equals two fourths. Now let's see if any others are equal to that as well. Let's see if we can increase this chain. I'm going to add some more. Tell me if you think, are any of those equivalent to two fourths and one half? Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. I see some thumbs down. Ellie, why do you think that's not, that does not work? How can you tell? What are you looking at to make your decision? What are we using? What is this part? What color is it? What are we looking at? What color? The blue, right? The shaded part. Are those shaded the same? Nope. Okay, now let's see if any of these are equivalent. What do you think? Do we have a need to add to our equivalence chain now? I see some thumbs up. Henrik, which one is equivalent to two fourths and one half? Four eighths. What is this one equal? Does anyone know? Eight eighths? Lennox, what is that equal? That equals one whole. So we have a nice equivalence chain happening, don't we? If we got rid of this, they would all be equivalent. Now let's see if we can find another one. What about this one? Does that work in our chain? Yes. Yes, three six is also equivalent. Your chain should be getting larger. Is your chain getting larger? Yeah? I hope so. So you should be writing your chain down. All right, let's start with a new chain. You guys ready for a new chain? Yes. All right, say goodbye to that one. Bye. I'm gonna put some new ones up. Do you see any 
equivalent fractions in that group. If you do, write them on your board and make a chain. Which ones are equivalent or the same? Charlie Carr, what do you think? Okay, so he said three thirds and four fourths are equivalent. All right, let's add a couple more. Are any of these equivalent to three thirds and four fourths? Okay. What about now? What about now? What do you notice about the numerators and denominators of the fractions in this equivalence chain? What do you notice, Lyric? We have eight eighths, three thirds, four fourths, and five fifths. What do you notice? So their new, Haley, their numerator and denominator are the same number, right? If I were to remember that that fraction line is really a division symbol, what would all of these equal if I divided eight by eight, three divided by three, four divided by four, five divided by five? Marin, they'd all equal one because it's showing the whole card is shaded right one whole card is shaded do you agree sir name yep who can name another fraction that would fit in that chain who could name another fraction that would fit in that chain sir name six six for sure gabe another one nine ninths ellie one over one. How about you, Max Deesberg? Ten tenths. We could do this all day. Max Fox. Twelve twelfths. What else? Seven sevenths. Charlie. Ah, big, big one. One million over a million. I think we get that chain. All right. Well done. Now that we have done some practicing, we're going to look at page 365. I'm going to use my doc camera because it's easier to do and show you. But I'm going to leave that up there for a minute. Get your pencils ready. You can put your lids on your markers and get ready with your pencil to do some equivalent fractions on number lines. All right, give me a thumbs up when you have your page and you are ready with the pencil. Look on the board, see if you can use your tools. All right, Astria is ready. Reese, you doing okay? You ready? Yep, she's got it. All right, let's do it then. Let's get started if I can find it. Okay, Reese, all right. The first thing we have to do before we can write equivalence chains is we are going to do some more dividing. Remember, fractions are all about division, really. So looking at your page 365, I'll write it here in case you are not there yet. It asks us to complete each number line, then show all fractions, including each fraction for one whole. So we have to look at the word down below. Go ahead and circle that. What does that say, August? What does that word say? On your page, 365. Have. So what do you think we're gonna do to divide this number line, August? 
What are we going to divide it into? Halves. What does that mean? How many equal parts? Two. So we have to kind of eyeball it, right? And divide it in half. If I were going to try to fold my arrow, right? Just like I would divide, I could fold that right there. And I know I'm going to have a halfway mark. What would the fraction look like, Madison? Yep, one over two, right? One over two, one half. But it also said I have to name the fraction for one. If this is zero halves, this is one half, how many halves would this be? Very good, Josh, two halves. That's the fraction for one. Two divided by two equals one. So that's how we would label this number line. Okay, now we have to look at the next one, August. What's the next one gonna be divided into? Go ahead and circle it, everyone. Thirds, they did the first one for you. Are we done? No, we've got to remember when we were dividing into thirds and we had our fraction bars, we have to do two lines to create three equal parts. So we already have one line, let's add the other. Cooper, what would that one be labeled? If this is one third, what's this line gonna be? Two thirds. And then the one whole would be how many thirds? Microphone answer? Three thirds. So we have one third, two thirds, and three thirds. Okay, Lennox, what's the next number line gonna be divided into? Well, we've already done a half. Right, we already have where we folded the half. You can just bring another one down. And then you could try to fold the, your paper. I like the fold trick. Line, you don't have to, you can eyeball it. But if I put that together, I get an idea that this is gonna be my next halfway mark. Remember for four equal parts, you need three lines. One fourth, what's the next one, Lucas? Two fourths, what's the next line, Lucas? What's the last line gonna be, Lucas? Four fourths, okay, how you doing, Henrik? Page 365. Yep, that's why I'm helping you. All right, Robert, what's the next number line divided into? Six, oh, we gotta look at our thirds, don't we? Remember two times three is six. So if we look at our thirds, go ahead and just drag your third line down. There's one of them. Here's another third line. I'm gonna use what I've already done. Now that I have my thirds, I have to divide my thirds in half. This one's already done. I have to look at dividing these two in half. Oh, it's gonna be right there on my one half, two fourths line. And then I need to divide this one in half. Make sure you have five lines, one, two, three, four, five, to make six equal parts. And then after one sixth, Finn, what would my next fraction be? One sixth, then comes what? No, we're, we divided into sixths, not sevenths, just six. What would be next, Max Fox? Um, two six. Two six. And then? Three six. And then? Four six. The denominator stays the same, Finn, because it's a number of equal parts. So start writing. You have to write this. And then six six. Okay? So we are dividing up our number line. All right, Bird, what's the last number line asking us to divide and do? Eights. So we know two times four is eight. We can divide into fourths first, divide it in half. There's your half mark. We see all these equivalent fractions, right? Divide your halves in half.
There's your fourths. How am I going to get eights, Henrik? If I have four equal parts, but I need eight equal parts, how can I take my fourths and turn them into eights? What do I have to do? You got to divide them in half, right? Divide your halves in half. And after one eighth, what's the next fraction, Ellie? Two eighths. What's the next one after that, Ben Bowers? One eighth, two eighths. What comes after two? Three eighths. Three eighths. You got it. Four eighths should have been here. What did I do? Uh oh, I got one wrong. Sorry, guys. Hold on. Okay, so one eighth. Come on. Oh, I see what I did because they already had that. I messed that up. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I, I did that exact There we go. Okay, so one eighth, two eighths, three eighths. Your fourth eighth should be lined up. Right, with the two fourths, the three six, the one half, because those are equivalent. Five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and your eight eighths. Okay, once you have that done, I want you to go ahead and Answer numbers two, three, and four. You are gonna look at this diagram you just created and write an equivalence chain with fractions that equal two halves. And then you're gonna answer the question, why are the fractions in the equivalence chain for two half equal? And then number four, you can't see here, but number four says, why does the length of unit fractions get smaller as their denominators get larger. I want you to work on those three independently. We will do some group work here in a minute, but go ahead and answer those three questions. Once you've divided your number lines up, answer those three questions. And I'll give you about five minutes and we'll share out our thinking. And then we'll do the rest of the work in uh, triads or partners. So plug through, see what you can get done. I'm gonna come check your work, make sure you're getting it and see if you need any help.
All right, let's see how we did. Reese, would you mind telling me what your equivalence chain looks like for two halves using the information above? Well, let's do it together. Let's line it up. Two halves is equal to, what do you see? Which fractions is, are equal to two halves, Reese? Do you see? What's right underneath it? Um, three halves. Not three halves. Do you remember the video when he circled them? Do you remember that, you guys? Yeah. Yeah. He circled the ones that lined up. So what does this one say? Two halves is equal to what? Help her out. Right there. Oh, you got it now, Reese. Keep going. Is equal to what else? Is equal to um, six six. Well, before that, what does this one say? Four what? Four fourths. Four fourths is equal to what's the next one? Six six. Six six, which is equal to what's the last one? Eight eight. Eight eight. That's called an equivalence chain because they're all the same. So why are the fractions in the equivalence chain for two halves equal? I saw Cerne wrote something. What did you write, Cerne? Why are they all equal? I mean, why are the fractions in the equivalence chain for two halves equal? I love that. You could have said they all equal one whole. Did anyone write something different? Did anyone say they show the same amount? That would work too. They show the same amount. I don't care what you write, but write something that's similar to that. Okay, you can use your own words. Uh, let's hear from Marin. Why does the length of unit fractions get smaller as their denominators get larger? Excellent. You are dividing it into more pieces so they get smaller, right? I like how you said that and gave an example. You are dividing it into more pieces so they get smaller. All right. So we are going to use number lines to do some more comparing of fractions, actually looking for equivalent fractions. So if you turn 
your page over to 366. 366. I'm gonna give you what we used on Friday. And if you are remote, you have a tool that looks like this. You also wanna get, you can use your pencil or you could use a ruler. It doesn't matter. I tend to use a pencil because I have it in my hand and it's easy, right? If you feel you need a ruler, I will give you and your partners a ruler. We lined up our ruler to whatever fraction we were told to look at, and we found all the fractions that were equivalent to that. We found that one half was equivalent to two fourths, to three sixths, to four eighths, to five tenths, to six twelfths. We found that one third was equivalent to two sixths and four twelfths two eighths and three twelfths, we went on and on. You can find all of these are equivalent, right? That's what we just did. You are going to complete page 366 using your number line tool. And you are going to write equivalent chains for fractions that equal a half, a third, two thirds, one fourth, three fourths and eight eighths. And then you have a couple questions at the bottom that you can work on as well with you with your partners. I was going to have you do triads, um, or it, you might end up with just one, depending on how our numbers fall. So it's page 366. We're going to pass out the tools. Get your tool at home. I know I sent it home with you, and we used it the other day. And we can get started. So you can find a group to work with and get started. You can do triads, yes. All right, you guys, make sure you join your group. You may get started. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, I think they probably did that. Um, well, yeah. Okay. Well, is there anybody who wants a ruler? If you would like a ruler to help line up your fractions instead of your pencil, let me know. Anybody? You guys, can you guys maybe make more of a circle so you can move it together? Do you guys need a ruler or do you guys think you're going to use your pencil?
because it's never letting me in. No, it was the wrong Zoom, honey. We have it on email. It said you were in Mrs. Harrison's Zoom. She's got an email from it. So you clicked on the wrong one. So if that happens, instead of missing all of math, I'm texting your mom, okay? Because if, did you tell your mom that you were, you couldn't get yeah. in? Yeah. Okay, so. She was on my link. So you were uh, sitting on her link. So don't miss all of math. Get out of it and try the other link, okay? It says right on I the did. Haley, please don't be rude to me. It was, we know we have an email saying that you were sitting in Mrs. Harrison's Zoom class, which is not where math is. It's in Mrs. Aubin's. Okay. 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 So if that happens again, and I don't want you to miss the whole thing, just go to get out of it. If if you're not getting in, obviously it's the wrong Zoom link because there's a teacher waiting for you. We've been looking for you. Okay. So just get off of it and go to the next one. Next, it's, I just don't want you to miss out on that. But I did record this, so you can go back and watch it. You need to get page three hundred sixty-six. And you're gonna be in a breakout group, okay? So you'll need your pencil, your number line sheet that looks like this. Do you know which one? You can get a ruler if you want. And then um, you and your team are gonna work on page 366. Okay, all right, I'm gonna put you into a group. Hold on. Let's put you in room three. Oh, she was not happy with me. Oh, yeah. Thank you. 
you did not finish that's okay I just wanted you to practice sit down sit down I'm not dismissing anybody so we're not getting rid of anything we're just going to wrap up our lesson here so if you did not finish I was saying it's okay don't worry the point was to practice finding equivalent fractions on a number line. So I'm going to go ahead and let you check your work for one half. We kind of did this on Friday. You see quite a few of them on here. You should have gotten at least, and I noticed some of you didn't put the equal sign between your chain. You want that equal sign. You should have gotten one half equals two fourths equals three six at least up to four eighths some of you went further and that don't tell me it's okay just that's great for one third you should have had one third equals two six not much of a chain there if you got a little bit more um let's see that if you're looking at the one we did on page 365, that's all you would have had. Two thirds, when you compare two thirds, you should have gotten four six. So check your work, see how you and your partner did. One fourth equals two eighths. If you didn't put the equal sign, please add that. That's what makes it an equivalence chain. And then for three fourths, you should have gotten microphone answer. What should it be? Six eighths. And this one was fun because they all equaled one whole. So eight eighths. 
right? We had two halves starting up here at the top. We already kind of did that one together. Three thirds equals four fourths, six six, and so on. All right, this one was interesting. As I came around, I saw some of you said one half is less than four eighths. Not true. You just told me one half is equivalent to four eighths. So if Jamie has a half dozen red marbles and four eighths dozen green marbles, does he have more red or green marbles? He has the same. And the reason that is, is because one half is equal to what? Four eights, they're equivalent. You should have gotten that those are the same. Nancy buys three six pound of walnuts. Sandra buys three fourths pound of almonds. Who buys more nuts? Who is it? Is three six or three fourths greater? Look, here's three fourths. Three six is all the way over here. Isn't three fourths greater? Yeah, so Sandra buys more nuts. Sandra. Chin and Maya collected shells at the beach. They both used the same kind of basket. Chin collected three fourths of a basket and Maya collected three thirds. Who collected more shells? Maya or Chin? All right, let's compare. Which one's greater, three-fourths or three-thirds? Look at your number line. Three-thirds is a whole basket. Three-fourths is way over here. It's not a whole basket. Which one's greater? Three-thirds. You should have said that Maya collected more. Maya. All right, this to five. Show me how you are feeling about locating equivalent fractions on a number line. I see you, Reese. I see you, Astria. Good job, Ben. Henry's feeling good. Jensen, are you about half? Okay. Leo's got it. Gavin, you feel good about it. All right. Nice work today. We will look at more comparing of fractions tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye. You can put your sheets in the basket or you can hand them to me if that's easier.